Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining Reline Live today. I am joined by Don LeBlanc. Uh, a lot of you are familiar with this face. I've been asking him to join a lot of these. Um, Don is my counterpart in the Northeast um, and is similar to myself. He's an independent rep that focuses on a various um, spectrum of products. So we're also joined by Andy Sherwin, who is with Channel Line and the product we're going to be talking about today. Thank you for joining me, you guys. You're very welcome. Our pleasure. Yeah, so we have the biggest Reline Live we've ever had today. Thank you all so much for your interest. Obviously, Channel Line is a product that people want to learn more about. So I think we're going to be busy today. If we go over <laughs> our 30 minutes, feel free to jump off. This is being recorded. I will have this on our website later this afternoon if you guys can't stay past the 30 minutes. But I think we have a lot of content, so I think it's going to be a, it's going to be a good one. So I'm going to kick off. Um, I've got your PowerPoint pulled up here. I am going to show screen. So Don, do you want to kick us off by giving us a product overview or Andy, would you like to do that? Don, go ahead. Sure. So, you know, I think um, for folks who have joined us before, if not, thank you so much for coming on board today. Thanks everyone. Um, Basically, uh, Channel Line is a glass reinforced plastic, and um, Andy and I met each other, um, I'd say middle to late last year, uh, and it is a solution that has been um, highly versatile and allows uh, me as a Reline uh, representative and as an engineer as well um, to be extremely diverse in the shapes and um, solution offerings, diameters, curves, and bends. You'll see a lot of photos today. Um, and you'll see why I'm passionate about it as a solution. Uh, but GRP for short, glass reinforced plastic once again, um, is uh, a culmination of um, a few different materials put together to basically make a monolithic shape um, in any various shape that you're looking for. Um, and one of the benefits of this solution is that it has an extensive service life because of its uh, makeup, its product makeup. Andy, you wanna expound on that a little bit? expand on yeah, that so so just as a bit of a history um channel line is not a new product channel line has been around since uh 1984 um predominantly working uh in europe initially uh we now ship globally um when we're working everything from in countries everywhere from australia through uh the middle east Europe and now North and South America. I'm in charge of North and South America, and I've been involved with Channel Line since about 2000. Um, I installed Channel Line as a contractor for 10 years. Um, from a product point of view, it's, in my opinion, as a trenchless uh, guy, it's the most versatile product out there. It can be um, manufactured to any shape, size, or form. Um, no limits. Um, we built. So I think it's a fun time, Andy. Let's find out maybe how many people we have. So many people on this Reline Live. Let's maybe take a poll and find out how many people know about Channel Line. Great um, idea. Yeah. I'm interested to see. Um, and one thing while I put this poll up, um, so this is a quick one. I'm launching. We'll just wait like 30 seconds and let everybody kind of answer. Um, what I am curious about, though, is the, I, sorry, not curious about, what I am um, want to mention while I'm on this call is we like to keep this interactive, so you guys can use that question box, and you can actually um, it, submit questions in real time, and Dawn and Andy will be taking those questions. Absolutely. Okay, I'm going to give it, so I'm going to give it one more second. We have had about 70% of everyone on the call has answered okay i am going to close this poll and share the results so this is really interesting you guys we i mean 34 percent have actually heard of this product which i think is a pretty good number um considering Fantastic. we have people from across the country and i know in the west this product is fairly new to us so i, I think that's a a good statistic yeah for okay. sure guess i need to do um, my job a little better <laughs> Well, that's why we're doing this. We're going to bring the product <laughs> nationwide, right? <laughs> yes, <really. laughs> All right. So, yes, you guys, if you have questions, submit that. I will be um, I will be fielding those. 
Dawn, I do, um, I have one question for you since you and I are in the same roles across the country, but yeah. I'm very channel line. I'm, I'm learning since you're educating me on all these different products you represent and I'm now representing. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> what, what brought you to channel line? What, what intrigued you the most about repping this product? Yeah, certainly. I mean, the, the reasons are vast. Um, if I name maybe the top three, not in any specific order, um, the ability, what I love about um, Channel Line GRP is the ability for them to have vast types of designs. And what I mean about that is not just the geometry, but uh, when we get into discussing any given project, Andy and I are always talking about, you know, all the things that a designer or owner wants to hear, which is what is the service life that they desire, right, to have this end product or this end lining uh, solution. Um, type of liner are we providing? Are we providing a standalone designer to meet um, highway loads, hashed OLRFD loads, or are we designing more of like a composite design where there's going to be a, a structural concrete around it, or even what they call a type three liner, which is really more like a corrosion resistance lining. Um, and obviously all three of those types of liners have different design and wall thicknesses. So there's a lot of, Andy said it earlier, the word versatility comes to mind there not only in the geometries but the types of liners and as you'll see in some of these photos and case studies is we're not just doing monolithic pieces we can panelize the system um, we can drop it in, in in shorter segments so we can make curves and bends so there's a lot of um, you know options there additionally you know when we're trying to maximize flow area, waterway area you know andy's background is in the sanitary source side which you guys will see here um it's more on the highway side and so you know it's always about maximizing the remaining area that we can get out of the host culvert or host sewer and the ability for andy and and the company to get really really close to the host material is is um very good because we do like a template everything and they can get real tight up against the host pipe and maximize that waterway area I'm using my hands like a true Frenchie over here. <laughs> <laughs> well, so I don't know if you guys are seeing what I'm sharing, but I went to the next slide to show uh, a couple of product pictures so they can kind of see what your hands are doing, Don. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and so, so yeah. go ahead, Cassie. No, I was going to let you continue on with some product stuff. I've got, we sure. do have questions that people submitted, but I kind of want to ask them in, I think, of the flow of the presentation. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, as Andy said, something that's been around since the early 80s. Um, as you can see in these photos, and I kind of threw, you know, you've got um, like a pedestrian type shape, which is very common in the part found up here in the Northeast, a lot of the park systems or railroad beds, they have this top arch with the vertical legs and a flat bottom, um, as you see the photo on the left. Uh, obviously circular. One of the things I wanted to mention today, Cassie, I don't know if you knew this, but None of this has to be nominal size, right? So a lot of times when we talk about pipe solutions, it's, you know, you're climbing six inch increments, 42 to 48, 54, 60, so on and so forth. And with any solution, we don't have to be, if you guys want something that's, you know, 2.5 inches or 74.3 inches in diameter, we can accommodate that. So it's, it's totally feasible to make something you know, if we have to stretch the limits of our hydraulic design with our liner, that's that's possible. Um, you know, one of the things that drew me towards them is the ability to do box culverts, which you guys see in the bottom right there. So this is a small, not too far from where Andy lives up in Canada, um, but you know, your average square box or rectangular box is another solution that they have. And then let's talk about hydraulics. That's a question that we get asked by every engineer that we work with. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> the first question that they want to talk about is flow. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know if you want to tackle that, Andy or Don. Um, Don, you being the engineer, maybe you want to talk about it, but how this compares with maybe some of the other products that we represent. Absolutely. So I guess case in point, in, in what I was just talking about, about maximizing the fit, I mean, in that top photo, you're seeing a brick, um, basically a tunnel arch, right? Where that liner is right up against, you can see how tight that is. And it's great because we're maximizing the waterway area. So that's flow point number one, but also it has one of the best Manning's coefficients in the industry at 0.009. Um, so it's extremely smooth. 
uh, which helps obviously as we decrease in size, our mannings is increased, so, <coughs> excuse me, so we get better flow. Now, conversely, if you look at that bottom photo, which I added here, um, that is a, basically a red stripe aggregate that gets installed at the plant. And that can be used really for two reasons, if not more. Uh, the most common two that I can think of is, you know, you want to give a little roughened surface to the invert for aquatic life or what have you. And we can make that pre-manufactured uh, aggregate any, you know, within reason, various sizes. So if you want it a little larger, we could make it a little bit more bold. Um, but the other reason is like in sewers, um, which I'm excited to talk about today is, is the sewer part of it, is with high slip surface so when when the folks are in there working they don't slip on the on the brand new liner so andy i have a question for you um sure. is this a is this a sewer in this picture that's being no, lined this is, under my this is, funnily enough it's a great question this is actually a uh, a pipe arch in buffalo new york that uh it was the first project I ever installed uh, back in 2000. Uh, it was a two-piece liner, 14 feet wide by eight feet high, uh, yeah. supplied in two pieces. But no, this is actually a, a fish bearing creek. I see the outlet now. That was a dumb yeah. question. I see it running right That's into okay. a river. That's okay. <laughs> At quick glance, That's though. I am curious because we are going to talk about sewer today, which is very new to Reline Live. We typically talk storm water. Um, sure. What are some examples of lining sewers under live flow? I guess that's new to me. That's um, something that was really developed uh, in uh, Los Angeles. Obviously, Los Angeles is a very densely populated city. Um, uh, and basically, digging a um, uh, or putting bypass in place, they have a zero spillage uh, um, policy there. So you are not allowed to spill an ounce of sewage. Um, so the contractors basic, basically got creative and, and um, got with a few manufacturers and started to actually push pipe under flow. And I think, Don, you've got a couple of videos uh, yeah, sure. later, later in the presentation that actually show that. Yeah. The, oh, great. Um, yeah. Um, the slide before, actually, or a couple of before, uh, the railway arch there was lined, the one on the left-hand side, uh, was actually lined in live flow, and that is a, that is a creek. Uh, and basically what they did is they built a berm to hold the fish back w during the installation um, and actually slip line the culvert and then grouted it without any bypass at all. So it is possible to do. We have a, um, actually an engineer just typed in a question and I can tell it's an engineer because of the type of question it is. <laughs> um, <laughs> to get a tight fit is a laser mapping of the host normally performed as the minimum dimensions would be the restriction. Two, two ways of doing that. Um, the traditional way, obviously back in the eighties, we didn't have laser profilers. Uh, do you have pictures of a mandrel in the presentation, Don? I do. So if yeah. we go forward, keep going, keep going. Where are they? No. Why don't we? Why don't we hold? Okay. I know they're in there. Because so, so, so basically, yeah. two two different ways of doing this. One is to build a 3D template, um, which is basically a, a, a plywood or or a steel uh, mandrel, uh, the size of the I, uh, the OD of the liner and then literally transport it through the sewer or the or the culvert. If it fits, we know the liner fits. Okay. But yes, nowadays um, uh, laser profiling is is an excellent way to go. Just expensive. Uh, for sewer, we we love laser profiler because typically they, it's quite long between access points. Uh, yeah. Obviously, with a culvert, it's you know 150 feet, 200 feet max. Um, so we can do that manually. Okay. Yeah, typically, Cassie, if I may add to that, you know, there, there's often times, I think Andy was kind of hinting at it with culverts, you can almost most of the time, now mind you, I've, in several years, I've run into our, our challenges with sweeps and bends and different and different across the station lines. Um, 
you know, a 3D is probably the best data you can give. And I, oh, I was yeah. saying, you know, um, but if you can get a, a 2D mapping, if you're working in a culvert and you can get a 2D, you go in with, like I do, I, I go walk a culvert with a tape measure, get some general ideas, you know, whatever you can do within the extent of the project and the funding for that project. Um, okay. You'll see some of the stuff that Andy's going to show here in his case study and how many different bends and sweeps and geometries that we're accommodating. And therefore, that 3D uh, data is really, really good. Well, this is um, preemptive to the slide that you're about ready to show, Don. Is we got asked the question: Should the gap between the existing and the liner be grouted? Yeah, I'd say this for anything other, you know, including channel lines. So everything we do, right, Cassie, is um, yeah. oftentimes I have the conversation with a, a public works director at a, at a municipality, and it's like, hey, we're shoving you know, a, a liner real tight up against the host pipe. There's not even going to be any theoretical room between the liner and the host, right? And then we're going to bulkhead the end, so there's no chance of water getting in between there. 99.9% .9 of the time, my answer is always going to be, yeah, if you can get grout in there, I think that's the best, because then you're preventing any other water or surrounding things from getting into the annulus, but also you're stabilizing the culvert liner inside the host pipe, and you're engaging yeah. that backfill soil envelope. So everything's locked up tight. Um, I think, you know, if, if you can get in there and you'll see some pictures of some grout ports like we do in the pipe walls and stuff. So you're not actually trying to pump it from the ends. So you here go. you see the ends and the walls, right? Um, so it's very easy to access in between the liner and the host, even if that space is small. Um, it's a very, yeah. very flowable fill or we use a very flowable cellular concrete to fill that space. So it flows very, very well. Yeah, they're, they're, we always recommend. Yeah, sorry. there are basically two uh, types of design that we like to use. One is a composite, whereby the liner wall will be thinner. Um, it basically forms a um, a rigid structure in the end, and it's a thinner wall liner, higher strength concrete, and basically you're looking for a shear bond between the liner, the grout, and the hose pipe. Or we have a standalone liner that just uses a 3M, uh, 3MPA, sorry, 3, uh, 300 PSI um, cellular grout. All the grout's doing there is transferring load from the existing sewer or the existing culvert to the liner. So yeah, you do really need grout, um, but it can be can be low strength. Not not to say that this can't be direct buried, Cassie. Right. So oftentimes, as you and I have oh, talked. Yeah. 10 times over is, you know, we'll, get, we'll, we'll be in a culvert scenario where they're lining the culvert, but they want to widen the shoulder of the road. So they're like, hey, yeah. we don't want any funky transitions between the liner and the new pipe. Can we just direct bury this pipe? And, and yes, absolutely is the answer to this. So, you know, one of the things it, it's sort of related, but you asked me at the top of the webinar, what drew me to channel line? It, and I'm a huge advocate, as you know, for self-performance, right? municipality or a county highway or state highway group that wants to do their own culvert maintenance. Um, this is a solution that Andy, again, he and I, we go around showing people how to do these liners. So it contractor friendly, but it's also installer owner friendly as well. So if they want to self-perform it, they have the means to do so. We can assist with that. Right. Very low tech installation. Easy peasy, let me squeeze yeah. it. <laughs> what we like. <laughs> so I'm gonna let so, you guys kind of going through some of these slides. Yeah, we'll, we'll, and we'll fly so Andy can show the case studies and stuff, but I wanted to just highlight, you know, this is one of the things, uh, Cassie, where, you know, we, we look at some of these other solutions. It's very difficult to accommodate with other solutions, sweeps and bends and hard curves and things of that nature. As you can tell from these two photos, and I love it because it it looks it's glass smooth. You know, you you got very little gap in between the joints there. Its transition is almost quote unquote seamless. Pardon the expression, but um, you've got a very nice flow line there. It's all continuous. There's no funky transition pieces, and all again, all that is dry fit at the plant to ensure that it's going to fit in the hose pipe. So. Bends and sweeps are not scary to us, whether they be vertical or horizontal, as you see. We can go to the next one if you want. So 
just showing some some unique shapes and, and curves here. Um, you know, I, as I've gotten to know Andy and gotten to know Channel Line a bit, the egg shape or the teardrop shape that you see in the top right is not a common one, Cassie, for us in the stormwater world, right? Yeah, no. <laughs> very much, very much sanitary. Very common in sanitary, as very, I've learned. Very common a lot sanitary. of those old ones are built out of brick or what have you. Um, yeah. So common shape for channel line to accommodate with ease. Um, so the idea you've got the low flow down there and you've got a tighter, tighter radius so that the flows can move. And then, uh, you know, so you can see sort of the in the bottom center line, some very tight radius pipe arches, which is often a, a, a problem, right? Because if you start with a host arch, what happens over time under live and dead load, they start to go like this, right? Wow, and then yeah. you get those corner radiuses start to creep in on you. And so making tight radius panel line or GRP is um, something that they do very commonly. So, you know, we, don't, we haven't talked about this at all, Cassie. I don't know if you saw this slide ahead of time or whatnot, but this is um, vertical structure. We haven't really, um, I think you might have spoke a little bit on some of the HDP ones about vertical solutions. Um, but as you can see, the ability for uh, channel line to make, whether it be square, rectangular, circular, uh, vertical structures is totally feasible. So I wanted to at least throw one slide in there to mention it. Yeah. Andy, how large of a diameter can you guys manufacture this to? Uh, 21 is the uh, 21 foot is the biggest we've done so far, and that would come in a seg uh, in segments. Um, okay. Obviously, you can't ship a 21 foot diameter pipe, so we we have a um, in fact we actually have, if you can see, a proprietary um, tongue and groove joint, so we can break pipe down into however many pieces. The joint is structural, it's as strong as the pipe itself, and we use a structural adhesive to actually fix this together. Um, that means we can literally break down pipe into, um, you know, we can break a 20 foot, uh, 20 foot diameter pipe down into four segments, flat pack it in a container and ship it out to site, and then the contractor assembles from there. We had a very perfect question while we're on it um, come in from someone. They said, do you have a plant in the US? And if so, where is it located? Or where does the pipe ship from? Okay, so no, right now we don't have a, uh, a plant in the US. We're waiting for enough volume of work to build a plant in the US. We just okay. haven't seen that yet. Uh, right now we manufacture uh, in, the mid, uh, in, the, in the UAE, in Dubai, and okay. ship globally from there. Um, that is going to raise questions about lead time. I know it is. Lead time, <laughs> lead time is uh, eight to ten weeks, no matter where in the okay. world. We're actually very good at sticking to that. They look at it eight, eight to ten weeks from time of order. The contractor will see pipe on site. Okay, that's fair. Um, do you want me to play this video, Don? I know that this is embedded, right? There's two videos there, left and right, um, and okay. they're showing these, and I'll let Andy expand on it. I think I turned the volume off so you, um, you don't have a big sound in the background, but the point yeah, of showing so, these so is basically, showing these. Yeah, sorry, Don. These go back to um, everybody's excited on this webinar. <laughs> uh, these go back okay. to sanitary installations. Um, both are, or the one on the left is actually a pipe arch uh, under the city of LA. Uh, it's, it was a slip lining project, but installing the bends, you can't slip line around the bend. And this just shows how um, how clever the contractors could get when they're installing. If you want to play the video, it'll actually show you, or should show you, the amount of flow that they're working in. And um, is it playing? Yeah. Do we have a lag? Yeah, it's playing. Okay. Might be lagging on our end. Kind of I, I think so, yeah. Okay. It's I lagging on so, my yeah. end. Okay. That, it could be because I'm on video, I'm playing a video, and I'm on <laughs> my microphone. <laughs> so I can try this one. Let's see if that one is any better. Can you guys see that playing? It's lagging. Yeah, it's lagging. 
Now this is a This is a circular yeah. liner, and you may be able to see. This is almost seventy percent flowing. Almost seventy percent flowing. Yeah, I see the I see the water underneath them. That's very cool, though. Yeah, they're in a very tight manhole right there, aren't they? So one looks like a pipe arch and one is circular. Yeah, correct. Yeah, correct. Okay. And these guys will be pushing the, the on the right, they'll be pushing a thousand fifteen hundred feet of pipe from one spot. So it's very productive. They're you know, they're pushing a pipe every two or three minutes. So they're just they're joining it together and then pushing it in. Yeah, exactly. And then you basically are pushing a pipe train through the existing sewer. I think the longest drive is it's it's crazy. It was it's a crazy amount. It's half a mile. Um, they've actually managed to push circular pipe. And these segments can be customized if they if they have small manholes to get in. You can customize and make the length shorter. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Yeah, if, you, if people look on LinkedIn, I posted a, uh, a post last week of a spot repair that we did uh, that was 30 or 40 feet deep, and they lined 40 feet spot repair in the middle of the section. Uh, it's in here. Through, through an existing manhole. Oh, is it? Okay. Yeah, Good. should be. Okay. These are some interesting shapes. <laughs> so so uh, the top right and the bottom left are the same job. That is uh, one that we are shipping this week. Um, and it what you'll notice out of it is that it looks kind of like a pipe arch. Um, haunches, if you look at that bottom left photo, the haunches are a little bit moved up. And the reason for that um, is because we did have a contractor who was very savvy and very good. And they um, took a survey at our direction. They were able to get in what they weren't able to do their survey equipment because of things like existing water or whatnot is they went in and implemented that info with tape measure measurements and added it to their data. They gave that back to us. We gave them a template drawing that they built out of plywood. Um, they brought in a 3D plywood template of the exact length of the liner segments that you see here. And they said, yep, that fits through and we went into production. So that's shipping out this week. Mm -hmm. um, so roughly speaking, I think it was like a seven by five ish pipe arch. Um, and then this, these transition reducer pieces that Cassie just toggled to very common for um, like the state of New York DOT, for example, to use these reducer type things. And in the, the past, they've been uncentric because you haven't had materials to be able to do an eccentric all that well. So they've had to bury the almost like a sump. They'd had to fill that in yeah. with stone. So what you see here is the ability to not have to cut into the inlet and make an eccentric reducer without any additional work, like removing a cutoff wall or something like that. Okay. So we have um, quite a few questions have come in while we were talking. <laughs> uh, sure. Is there any specific equipment required for installation, especially for the uncommon shapes? Uh, no, absolutely not. It's basically... Um, Either a, there's there's two inst basic installation methods. One is what we call uh, uh, reline, and one is slip lining. Reline is uh, basically carrying a piece of pipe in at a time, homing it, blocking it with wooden blocks. You can see in the bottom picture here there are wooden blocks behind the liner, um, and then the pipe is assembled one piece at a time. Slip lining for that you basically either need uh, rails in the invert and then you would winch or push the liner along those rails. Obviously the rails are sacrificial um, or would you, you would use a pipe carrier um, that's basically four wheels and uh, a couple of bottle jacks or a couple of jacks to lift the pipe off the ground and then you can transport it in. Slip lining is you're pushing one piece of pipe at a time, but for smaller jobs, people, guys are using backhoes or um excavators um with a with a push plate so it's it, most general contractors or municipal or dot's will have the equipment uh to install um this pipe okay um what maintenance does the liner require in its lifetime very little it's it's uh, actually um self-cleaning for the most part 
and it's it sheds slime very very well. Uh, obviously, we recommend every you know five year inspection, but it doesn't need maintenance. Okay. Um, the videos that we were showing that were kind of lagging are those on YouTube, Andy? And if not, can we upload those today? For people? I could, I could, yeah, I could put them on YouTube. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I could send them to you. Yeah, perfect. I will include that in the follow up email that GoToWebinar sends out. Thinking I'll have a link to those. So Fantastic. Thanks for yeah. that. No problem at all. Yeah, we'll make those available. Great. Cool. Any, so now we're going to show some projects, right? Okay. In case settings, we're running a little long. We still have okay. everyone involved and, and interacting. So I think we should just keep going. I will make so it as fast as possible. If you okay. can, Cassie, and I know you're you're. Back up one slide so that the okay. one with the 40 foot of cover. Right. That's the one that you guys were talking about two or three slides ago. So this was on Andy LinkedIn. And I mean, I oh. run in it all the time. Had I known about this solution, I could think of like three or four opportunities off the top of my head where you've got structure to structure and you're like, you're not going to dig a, a 50 foot hole in the, you know, excavation in the ground. What better? to panelize then to panelize these things and drop them through the host structure and slip line and get it done for a spot repair or a full full on repair. Um, yeah. So that's what they ended up doing here, structure to structure. Now this is actually a six foot diameter, so that's a large liner, very yep. large liner. It's a big liner, um, and to do a bypass on that and try and install cured in place or some other slip liner, you're either looking at a, a, a large excavation. As you can see here, we were able to uh, break the panels down into small enough that they would fit through the existing manhole and then assemble it in so, uh, on site, grout the annulus, fully structural, um, fully structural repair. So it's a good solution. So what is this, this project? Okay. So this is a little case study of a job we did a couple of years ago up in uh, uh, British Columbia, the, on the, the island, uh, Vancouver Island, for the city of Victoria. Um, Ross Bay Cemetery is about 300 years old. It's one of the oldest cemeteries in Canada. Um, and it runs um, basically out towards, it's, it's right on the, the ocean. Beautiful, beautiful building. There are many, many um, uh, famous uh, people there, ex-prime ministers, poets. They actually run tours through the cemetery. So but they also had a uh, two meter by one meter would be um, seven feet by um, four feet. Uh, brick feet. Brick arch. Brick arch running through on the knees. Nice. About 16 feet deep. About 16 um, feet deep. The, uh, the, the, the sewer itself had, turns out, 12 curves or bends and four drop structures. So if you can see here, we were talking earlier about uh, hand measurement versus multi-sensor. Because of the four drop structures, we weren't able to send a multi-sensor or a laser profile into the sewer. So the red marks you see on this drawing are actually taken from the contract by hand, and we were able to build a line. If you, if you move forward, um, one slide, please. So here you can see we took those Re, uh, scribbled red pen marks and we're able to actually design a liner with all the curves, um, with all the bends, um, and actually fabricate, uh, fabricate all of them within in the factory. Um, it was all a gasketed joint, um, and the, the uh, joints are tested to 30 psi, so it's 16 feet deep. Uh, we know those joints are, are completely 100% sealed. Um, Next slide, if you don't mind. Mm -mm. And you can see here um, all of the pipe being pre-fitted in the factory. We do this with every liner so that we know and we, we number every liner. So it's basically a, a big jigsaw puzzle. Easy. Uh, yeah, 
we try and make it easy for the contractor. We try and make it so that they know that the liner will fit on site because there's nothing worse than getting on the ground and things don't fit. <clears throat> the liner was basically, liner was basically uh, manufactured in accordance with the WIS 44402, which is a European GRP standard for non circular pipes. Plastic. The entire project was by So if you go to the next slide. We actually have a whole bunch of questions that have been coming in. Is this a good time for me to start Absolutely. intercepting those? Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Um, so is the material shipping cost a large percent of the overall cost of the liner? Um, if so, are most sales made for projects that need a custom tight fit or typical round liner applications also cost effective? <laughs> both, both. We're doing, uh, we're doing several uh, circular pipelines in uh, North America right now in Canada and in the US. Um, shipping is not a big, as big a deal as everyone thinks. A shipping container from Dubai to the Americas is a couple of thousand dollars. And very often there are containers coming to North America empty that have shipped from the Americas to the Middle East full, and then they ship them back for free. So very, very often we can get uh, those containers for a few hundred dollars for the journey back. So it's actually very economical. It's not a, as big a deal um, price-wise as everybody thinks. Okay. Um, what problem was the host pipe having when you slip lined through the manhole? A 40 foot deep one, Andy. Oh, that's a, actually a sanitary line. It was uh, hydrogen sulfide corrosion. And it, for some reason, it was just in one area of the sewer it was particularly bad. It started to show rebar uh, through the concrete. So they decided um, they decided to just do a spot repair there. Now, again, the beauty of this system is if there's degradation in the in the near future, we can go in from both ends, or we can go in from one end and extend that liner and finish that complete section. So yes, it is a true segmental liner. We can we can start off where we finished with that liner. Okay, another question is how could cross connections be made to the liner without open cutting? So basically, um, that's a matter of obviously doing a good survey of where they are. Um, and then basically the line is very easily cored. Um, it's a very durable material. Um, it's very easily cored or, or cut uh, with a you know, an angle grinder or a, um, a, diamond bit, a diamond core bit. And then basically you, you would bridge the gap between the uh, cross the connection or the lateral pipe and the liner with a piece of PVC or a pure in place pipe or HDP, doesn't matter what that material is. We can actually make those connections in house as well. And then basically you seal up both ends and the grout uh, uh, encapsulates everything and holds it into place. So it's a very simple process. I, I'd like to throw a note in here. If, if any other given uh, solution that's out in the industry, looking at a profile that we're seeing on the right-hand side would have been very difficult to accommodate. With the, the solutions that Channel Line offers, this was something that they were able to do very, I want to say easily, but I'm, I'm sure there was a lot of work that went into it, but um, they were able to accommodate a very challenging project such as this. Yeah, th this was this was the real head scratcher with this product uh, project, and I'd never come across anything like this. So these were right. up, up to six feet uh, drop structures, and there were four of them um, through the sewer line. Again, sixteen feet deep under a cemetery that holds historical tours. So you're not you you're just not digging on these. Um, so effectively, I got my head together with the contractor, and we came up. If you can see the diagonal lines um, at a 45 degree angle, the contractor actually went in and removed these steps. And then if you go to the next slide, you'll actually see we were able to build a liner to fit um, at a 45 degree angle. Um, 
great solution and it worked very 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 well again we built a jigsaw that fit um down the 45 degree rather than trying to do an actual step um this was much easier and uh, again we were able to maximize cross-sectional area and um and hydraulics in this within this pipe um so if you go to the next slide hey uh, andy yeah hey, forgive me cassie i'm also monitoring the questions that come in i feel this really important one um that came up if you don't mind me tackling it um was asked, does Chipline comply with ASTM D3262 requirements to meet the design requirements of ASTRO LED bridge design? Absolutely. And, and uh, the answer is yes. Yeah. Um, we're, we're fully compliant with D3262. Um, the West 43402, and uh, now, as of actually this week, the ISO uh, 16611, which is the newest standard for non-circular GRP. So yeah, we're 100% we're covered. We, we issue certificates of conformity with every liner that goes out. Uh, we have a fault testing uh, facility at the factory um, that can be witnessed by um, a third party inspector if needed. So yes. Do you want to tackle this other question, Don? Which one is that? Where are you looking? With increased flow velocity due to less friction, especially in stormwater installation, can scour erosion be an issue at the outfalls or downstream of installation? If so, are there any SOPs to deal with that? Yeah, and it's just like any other uh, liner, right? Where, whereas with like the high density polyethylenes or the steel solutions that are out there, when we ta start talking about Manning's coefficients and reducing areas and those Manning coefficients are 009 to 0.012 or anything like that, you inherently do just like um, this individual asked you inherently have the potential to increase velocity in that sense uh you know your medium to large riprap is the most common sop or practice that i've seen contractors and or engineers specify is just put some some scour protection at the outlet um you know i did i did a project out in uh way out in the sticks um a couple hours north of pittsburgh uh, I don't even know what the bordering state is up in that southwest corner there, but um, where they had some extremely high velocity potential and they ended up building a, um, I believe context supplied it, but it was like an armor armor rock or armor flex. I forget the exact um, uh, solution there, but it was a scour protection pad because we, even the host pipe had horrible uh, velocity conditions. So scour is something we always have to consider. Uh, no matter what the type of liner is and but it's something we can discuss for sure on how to accommodate that at the outlet it's a great question i appreciate the question are you muted cassie i unmuted myself i realized as soon as i did it <laughs> <laughs> um, this is our last slide if you guys have any more questions shoot them in the box otherwise we'll kind of give a wrap up and let you guys go we've gone 15 minutes over but everybody's been very engaged so thank you for all your questions so yes, just thanks, just yeah thank you very much just to preface this this is actually a video of the this is a gopro video of the installation if you go back one slide very quickly cassie and i won't okay. hold everybody up i can explain what's happening here this is basically a um, panel carrier as i uh, discussed earlier but the contractor again got a creative got an electric wheelbarrow that they then um, customized so that they could lie on it to push the pipes into place <laughs> uh, and they were going 500 feet either way of an excavation up the um you can see here up the 45 degree uh, angles to get these pipe in so if you show the video now it's actually very very interesting kind of fun to slide. right okay yeah, that one yeah if, make hopefully sure. it plays. if not we'll get it up on the uh we'll get it up on the uh, on youtube yeah and somebody asked for a copy of the presentation and i didn't see any reason why we couldn't share that so they they wanted to share it with some co-workers yeah by all means okay by all means and if they need any other information um you know they can reach out to you or don or myself directly right right it's not going to okay. play as if
It looks good on my end. Do you guys see it okay? Oh, yeah, there you go. Yeah, it's starting, yeah, but it's working. Yeah, yeah so as you can see, okay. yeah. they're basically jacking up each piece of pipe and then pulling it or pushing it into place through the, uh, the brick sewer. So, yeah, it looks like I have to keep hitting. There we go. Yeah, it's, you can kind of get the idea there. You yeah. can kind of get the idea there. Yeah. So someone did ask um, if we could give them, give them an idea of cost. Between, Is there any sort of yeah, It's between one, $1 and $10,000. Up front? No, a foot per foot. Oh, Between $1 and $10,000 per foot. Because we're um, a custom, we, Don, I know you don't like me using the word custom because it sounds expensive, but I think everybody would be very pleasantly surprised. We know we're not going to put this pipe in every pipe in the ground. We are a, uh, a bespoke custom liner. Uh, that does not mean that it's, uh, it's um, stupid expensive. Because we're custom and because we design each pipe for each individual culvert or sewer, it's very tough for me to say, well, it's going to be $200 a foot. Um, so the best thing, can I give an idea of cost? Yeah. Would I, do I want to do it over this video? No. Um, <laughs> but we're, <laughs> but we're ba you're basically looking at anything from um, you know, $100 a foot up to $1,000 a foot, really. Uh, you know, if you're looking at a 10 foot by 11 foot box culvert that's under 40 feet of cover, the wall thickness is going to be, is going to be quite thick. And, um, you know, you're going to be closer to $1,000 a foot. Here's right. the answer I always, I always give folks on this question because it does happen often on any given line or on every any given day there's so many shapes as andy hit and so many diameters the answer i'll give you is this it doesn't cost you anything for us to quote you absolutely a little absolutely. bit of your time so right. if, if you know some very basic things like the shape the length what you're looking to achieve service life andy and i can work that up for you and have it turned around in underneath a week so yeah. Do not hesitate, I would say, anytime you have an opportunity to reach out to us, and then we can do the analysis together. I know um, since I've been on board with Andy, I've probably cranked out 25, 30 different um, solutions with Andy. Upwards? Okay, let's go 50. <laughs> I've, I've been inundating him, I think. Um, good way. So, um, you know, it, it doesn't take much. The very good team that they have, design team, and very good um, solutions uh, team that helps me out figuring out solutions every week. So, by all means, call us anytime. Yeah. Absolutely. So, I think that's it for us, you guys. I will, in the follow up email, I will have a link to this presentation, I will give a YouTube link to the videos. So you guys will have those available. Um, looks like we've answered all the questions that have come in. Um, awesome. Andy, where are you located? I'm in Montreal, actually, up in Canada. This is, I say that this is the first time I've been home for two months since I moved here 11 years ago. So I'm normally on the road. I, that's um, true for all of us right yeah. now. <laughs> yeah, I'm normally on the road probably three weeks out of the month. Um, yep. But yeah, I'm, I'm up here in Canada. Okay. I get I got a high from Ottawa. Oh, <laughs> well, we got an, oh, Joseph. <laughs> Excellent. Hi, Joseph. Sheldon, high from Ottawa. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, well, thank you guys so much. Um, this video will be on tvpipesolutions.com forward slash Reline Live this afternoon. Um, that's also in the link that I'll send you guys as a link to this video in case you missed any of it or you want to share it with colleagues. They can watch it whenever they want. Um, and you'll also, I know we have a lot of engineers on the call. In that follow up email that you'll be getting will be a link to a certificate if you guys need that for participating. Fantastic. Thank you guys hey, so much. Cassie, thank you for putting this together. It's been an absolute blast.
Yes, thanks, Andy, for joining us. And Dawn, I'm sure I'll see you again on the Rewind Live. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> thanks, everybody. You too. Bye, guys. See ya. Bye.